Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon, the podcast where we talk about everything and anything of Pokemon. And if you can't already tell from the title, this particular episode will probably rub some people the wrong way. Maybe it all depends on how people view certain things. Shiny Pokemon is obviously the topic. It's in the title. It is something that I've wanted to talk about for so long, but I didn't really know a good way to approach it. And I really don't think there is any good way to approach talking about shiny Pokemon because everyone gets into Pokemon for a specific reason. Um, they may like everything about Pokemon, but there is something that uh, draws to them more than anything else. For some people, it's the battling. For some people like me, it's the collecting. For some people, it's just the, the exploration, the adventure of these games. Um, and for some people, it's just the shiny hunting, just shiny Pokemon in general that draws them in. And it, it, it defines, I guess, a lot of people's um, purpose for playing Pokemon. The problem that I guess a lot of people have been coming across or just can't seem to wrap their heads around is what is the value of a shiny Pokemon, though? So here's my too long didn't listen version of what like I'm about to say for the next 10 minutes or so. To me personally, shiny Pokemon have no monetary um, value of any kind. The only value shiny Pokemon has is whatever personal preference you give it, like whatever personal value you have to it. So for an event or for a uh, distribution, maybe, or for anything else for that matter, shiny Pokemon have absolutely zero value, zero dollars. They don't make or define something, you know, that's going to be worthwhile. So what is really comes from, and, and maybe some of you have already figured out out um the pokemon uh, go event there was a pokemon go event uh i think it was pokemon go fest uh, uh, actually that people were really really upset about shiny pokemon like the lack of shiny pokemon or the lack of what feels to be boosted rates for shiny pokemon um to me honestly pokemon go fest was fine it wasn't like the most exciting thing. I think uh, I think a lot of people would agree like day two was probably not as strong because I think last year day two had a bunch of legendary Pokemon rotating throughout the day, which was great, which was magnificent. But this one, it just seemed like the same as day one, just with the Nia Legal event added in. But a lot of people like would go into Pokemon Go Fest knowing that there's chances, good chances. Let's let's make sure we define that or not define it, but repeat that good chances of getting shiny pokemon more so than but than usual and that's one of the things with the community day events right people love community events because we know the shiny rates are are maybe boosted or just uh, there's a higher chance of getting shiny pokemon but people then started complaining well i paid 15 dollars for this event i got zero shiny pokemon this was a total waste of my money doesn't mean like this event was terrible uh it should never happen again I don't, I completely disagree with that. I, if I go into a Pokemon event, I, the first thing in my mind is not, it's not, not it's, it's not shiny Pokemon. And the first thing that comes across my mind is cool. What am I going to catch? Because again, for me personally, I love the collecting aspect of Pokemon. I love catching Pokemon and some Pokemon are, in my opinion, just cooler to catch than others, right? I would love to catch a thousand Squirtles versus a thousand Caterpies. Like that, I think people, there are people that have personal preferences for certain particular Pokemon more than others. But in my mind, I don't think, oh, I get to increase my chances of catching a shiny Pokemon. It's just, it doesn't, for me, it just, that's not how it plays out. Like I get it for a lot of streamers, right this is what their careers basically come come down to for the most part for the most part and, and i'm not going to specify any creators but because every almost every pokemon content creator does some sort of shiny hunt but that's what it that's what it is it's like oh here's a new game okay what's the new shiny hunting method how can i get shiny pokemon faster and then that's it that's all they base their pokemon games off of and for me it's a little sad i think about it when i think about it that way it's like that's that sucks that you think that this is all that it's resorting to like you have to get the shiny pokemon like no like what about the adventure of it to going to the gym badges or the trials or whatever and, and collecting you know the medals and meeting the the you cool characters along the way like what happened to all of that in your adventure why is it that you go straight to well what are the shiny pokemon like and you know is there enough of them like can i get all these pokemon to be shiny um 
it's just uh, for me shiny pokemon i i love it when a, i stumble across a shiny pokemon so let me clear that up too i i don't dislike shiny pokemon i think there are some shiny pokemon that look cooler than others and because there are some shiny pokemon that there's really not that much of a difference in the color change right it's just like a lighter color of what it already is or maybe sometimes it turns out to be like a really ugly color like dragonite is not a very nice looking shiny i mean it's a little odd maybe after a few times looking at it, i'll change my mind because i have done that before of other shiny pokemon but it's it's just not that appealing but it, again for me shiny pokemon uh doesn't have any monetary value it's it's the personal value. i love stumbling across that rarity like i gone through hours and hours and all of a sudden bam there's a shiny pokemon if if i recall correctly my very first shiny pokemon experience was a um it was a ponyta in silver I was playing Pokemon Silver, and I didn't know what this was either, right? I don't think anyone really knew that they had a shiny Pokemon in front of them. I just knew there was something odd about it because, you know, I had that little circular star uh, animation when it pops up, and I thought to myself, like, uh, do I catch this? Like, is there, what is, like, I don't know what to do with this type of encounter. So I did. I caught it, and I don't, to be honest with you, I don't really know if I still have that Pokemon. I might have deleted it or let it run away. I honestly don't know. Because, again, I didn't know what shiny Pokemon were back then in 1999. I think that's when that, when Silver came out. Um, and so that was, that was my first shiny experience. But, like, <laughs> even after that, I didn't really care about shiny Pokemon. Um, I knew we had shiny distributions. Uh, I, I think so before I get to what the, the shiny moment to me, like made shiny more impactful to me in my, in my ideals or perspectives of Pokemon. Um, what, uh, before that we had like shiny distributions, right? We had uh, shiny Zera aura. Um, I think there was a couple shiny legendary Pokemon that you were able to get through codes or mystery gifts or whatever. And I'm trying to think if there was any other ones, because I know in black and white, I think there were a couple of events where you're given shiny Pokemon, but I didn't play black and white all the way through, so I missed out on those. But I guess going straight to the shiny moment for me that was like shiny pokemon are really cool and i love these type of experiences my the one that hit me the most was is what's actually was in actually let's go pikachu um i love that game because I, I mean i'm a gen one or if you want to define me or label me that way uh but i i do love the kanto region i do love kanto pokemon and i i, I love the let's go pikachu whether you know it was the, the the catching mechanic was fun to me the the graphics or the animation design style the art style to it was was uh was, was very pleasant to look at constantly um the battles were just fun uh i liked uh the team i was forming like it was just everything about it was great and so I remember playing it, playing it, playing it, like the first couple days I beat it. And after the credits, right, it takes you back to Pallet Town. And I like that feeling like, oh, I'm back home. Like, you know, I, I gone through this long adventure. It was great. And so I started going up Route 1 and I, I managed to go like the first couple patches of grass or maybe just I can't remember how many patches of grass was. But I remember getting up to the last one, having encountered a wild Pokemon um and then i think it was uh because i think they had random pokemon fly by too if i'm not mistaken uh because yeah when i got to the final patch i believe it was a pidgey that came across i that part i i might be uh i might not be in, uh remembering correct collect correctly but i i encountered a wild pidgey but it was a shiny pidgey and to me that personal experience of i've gone through this amazing game that i loved so much and i just you know at the end of it i just wanted to kind of walk up to the next town and just kind of reflect on all everything i have and it's almost as if the game just awarded me a shiny pokemon and it, it felt like i earned that shiny pokemon it didn't matter what the actual pokemon was i think i mean i do love pidgey but i think it's because it's a route one pokemon right it's a pokemon you meet early on and it kind of made sense for it to be a pidgey um just the fact that it was it was shiny it was like this is awesome and then after that i've gained an even more appreciation for shiny pokemon because i think we've had shiny pokemon and pokemon go before let's go came out um with the community days and even then i was just like i'm only collecting them because they're available they're there and people are you know hyping it up or whatever 
but now with let's go and, and that experience you know every shiny pokemon i get it's like oh this is awesome um when you get the daily spawns from pokemon go and and you I, the other day i got a shiny Surviper. it was like oh this is cool and it makes me also appreciate those particular pokemon more too um especially with those community days where you know i never would have given them a, a second thought and i think uh well, well, well like much chop like i again Gen 1, sure, great Pokemon, didn't care for its shiny, but when Community Day hit for that shiny, for, for Machop, I was like, oh, these shiny Pokemon are actually kind of cool, and I, I don't know, it just works for me, like, call me a sucker, call me gullible, call me whatever, but I think whatever Pokemon does with their events and the way they spotlight certain Pokemon, it just, it hits me more maybe because i have a, a i'm older and and i i, I kind of understand things a little bit better like i just have a deeper appreciation for things and i just love those surprises um go what's I'm trying, I'm trying to think of other like i've i've had a few random wild appearances in pokemon go that were shiny i remember my first actual wild shiny pokemon i caught in pokemon go was a murkrow and then i've got it i had a bigger appreciation for murkrow after the fact um and and i don't know i just don't like when a shiny is just given to you though because it just doesn't feel like it's earned so going back to the shiny zero aura event right we were given that one shiny zero aura looks super cool i think the design is great the coloration is great but it's just like okay cool that's it like it's just okay cool moving on where when i caught the shiny pidgey i was like oh this is awesome this is fantastic and i looked at it and i was like man do i want to evolve it to a pidgeotto do i want to evolve into a pidgey like what do i want to do like i had all these other thoughts of like what do i want to do with this shiny pokemon was there or it was just like okay i have it pokemon home done like there was nothing else for me to really do after that and again i just i rather have just stumbled upon it and not just been distributed or given it to me or or you know guaranteed to me i guess is what i'm trying to get at so when these pokemon go events happen and they say boost is shiny rates cool i have a higher chance to catch that people forget that it's a chance that it's like a gamble basically right you're not guaranteed you're never guaranteed shiny pokemon except of course if it's given to you like they pokemon company literally says you will be given a shiny so-and-so pokemon but in pokemon go it's always uh, the higher chance for a shiny pokemon and uh, it's it is a chance it's just like going if you're opening a pack of cards um let's say the pokemon go tcg pack right now right they're not gonna say oh you're guaranteed to get a uh, a radiant charizard there is a chance you will get a, uh, a charizard so you, you could buy 200 packs but you could still not get that charizard but you can't be upset with pokemon go tcg and say no you guys are wrong this is a terrible product you should stop printing cards whatever no that doesn't make any sense you knew going in that is the expectation you have a chance meaning that there's a chance of you getting it and a chance of you not getting it so i think a lot of us just start start to forget that these are more opportunities and not so much like guarantees like pokemon go gets a lot of slack for not a, not a lot of slack a lot of hate i don't know i don't know what the word I'm, I'm really wanting to go for here but we'll just keep keep with hate because you go anything on on pokemon go's twitter account and the responses are just all most or well, i should say mostly um just hateful comments but you know pokemon go always does these these good events and in some cases great events but people judge them by the shiny pokemon like did I get so and so many shinies? I only got one shiny. This event is terrible. Oh, but I got 25 shinies and this event was great. Like, that's not how you should be judging a Pokemon game. Like, it's great that they have them in there. And I think that should, like, here's, maybe this is an extreme example. If all of a sudden they come out and say Scarlet and Violet will not have shiny Pokemon, okay whoa hold up there now you're you're just going too far because shiny pokemon has always been like a thing in pokemon since at least go at least gold and silver as far as i know um you can't just take that away for like no blatant reason like give us the opportunity to have it it's always built in there and and i think that's just i don't know to me it's just not something to judge the game completely for 
or at least judge Pokemon Go events for. Like, you could go an entire Pokemon adventure in the Switch games and not get a single shiny. Or someone could be walking away with five shinies. But the what we have to remember, it's not about the end result of here's this many that I have. It's what was the experience and the moment around it that led you to that shiny Pokemon? Like, did you completely shiny hunt it? Like, did you go 2,000 tries? Like, for me personally, honestly, I'm sorry. I just, I don't, I'm not fascinated by the idea of turning a, a console on and off or, you know, walking in between paths to catch a shiny Pokemon. Like, I could get it. Like, that's going to be your most efficient route. Um, that is how you're going to go ahead and, and try to strive for these shinies. And, and I will, I will... I'm going to admit, yeah, I'm going to be completely honest. I will eventually do something like that because I haven't picked up Shaman or Arceus yet in, in BDSP. And I, and I know those are the only ways to really get those shiny Pokemon. So I guess I'll eventually get those. But that shiny Shaman or that shiny Arceus I get is not going to hold more value than the shiny Pidgey that I got in Let's Go. Right? Because it's about the experience for it for me that shiny Pidgey means a whole lot to me than a shiny Arceus where all it did was just reset, 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 reset. It just, it doesn't seem like er it's earned, right? Cool. I have, I will have a shiny Arceus, but again, I'm going to brag more about my shiny Pidgey than I'm going to brag about the shiny Arceus. And it's just so funny. And, you know, I was listening to other podcasts and how people judge their shiny Pokemon by also like how many like encounters you have with that that particular pokemon 200 500 a thousand encounters like well so what like it doesn't matter it's always an opportunity not a guarantee man it's just it's and it's so it's such a difficult topic of all things it's such a difficult topic to talk about when it comes to pokemon because people will take shiny pokemon uh, you know, opinions very, very personally. And, and I, I get it. Right. And I, and I'm already probably rub people a lot wrong, the wrong way already. Um, you know, I come off very probably, uh, rude when I'm talking about this, but, um, you know, it's, I, I think people just need to get a little bit of a reality check and just enjoy Pokemon for what it's supposed to, or what it's trying to deliver to you, which for me, it's about, the journey the exploration and the opportunities not just shiny pokemon just the opportunities interacting with you know other characters interacting with different pokemon interacting with you know the gym leaders the 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 bad guys of the of the of the games like it's about all of that as a whole rather than one specific chance at something but it, when you encounter that one particular chance that one shiny it just makes the overall experience way better. But again, when you stumble upon it, not when you think you deserve this or you think you're guaranteed this or, you know, doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again to just to, until you get it. I will never understand um, shiny hunting for starter Pokemon. Like, sure... I maybe yeah I I can get like you want to start your adventure with a shiny Squirtle or a shiny um, I don't know Chimchar or whatever, but it's not the end all be all right. If all like I think what Sword and Shield had shiny lock starters, that's fine. Like I, I I think the argument was you know the company doesn't want you to not play the game because you're trying to shiny hunt a Pokemon. Like just lock it. Say hey you can't shiny hunt it and just play the game move on like experience what it has to offer you um but yeah it's just i don't know shiny pokemon such a sensitive topic because there are some people that only value a pokemon uh only value pokemon content based on the shiny encounters or the shiny experience of it and then there are others that just completely disagree just don't even care about shinies at all and it just creates such a a weird I don't know, dynamic between the players of the Pokemon community. Um, but I, I'm curious, like you let me know what your thoughts are on shiny Pokemon. 
at the end of the day, they have zero monetary for me. This I'm going to say this for me. This is my own personal opinion, my own personal preference, my perspective on shiny Pokemon. They have zero monetary value and the experience behind the shiny Pokemon and how you encountered it is what gives it value. And that, and I will always, always hold up that sh that Pidgey experience as the number one experience over any other shiny Pokemon I think I have, unless something else beats it. But that's just kind of where where I sit with it. You guys, let me know what you think about shiny Pokemon. Um, let me know what your sh what your best shiny experience was. Um, what's your favorite shiny Pokemon? Uh, whether it was an encounter of yours or just you want to say, hey, out of all the shiny Pokemon, this one's the coolest, and I want to try to get this one. Um, yeah, because uh, I, I think that's why I never encountered shiny or I never pursued shiny hunting. I did it. I did try to do it once and let's go. And I was just like, eh, it's it's just really not for me. And I, I like my my rare chances. Um, but yeah, again, let me know if you agree, disagree. All these thoughts about shiny Pokemon. I would love to hear it. I would love to get more perspective on it. Um, sorry if I came off r rude in some way to some of you. It, it's not really my intent. Um, it's just... I personally found the Pokemon Go hate comments about the Pokemon Go Fest uh, and how people were just judging it based on shiny Pokemon. I just found that to be very um, unfair for Niantic uh, when it comes to those events. I, I, I think that the whole experience should be judged and not just the shiny opportunity because there were other things that they did do the rotating habitats the spawn pools um the raids uh the introduction of nihiligo there's all that to really consider when judging a an event like that um or any of their events you know what else did they include with that other than just saying here is a higher chance of shiny pokemon okay i think that was a long rant maybe hopefully all that made sense but let's go ahead and wrap up this uh, short episode with, of course, the Pokedex trivia, where I read to you a Pokedex entry from any of the Pokemon games, and you have to guess what Pokemon that is. Now, of course, I'll give you a couple hints. I'll read out some stats here and there, and then you'll lock in your guess, and then I will reveal to you what that Pokemon is. So without further ado, here is your Pokedex trivia. This Pokemon came to the defense of Pokemon that had lost their homes in a war among humans. It's a very short, uh, short Pokedex there. Um, let's see. It's a dual type. Uh, I can't give you the ability because I actually would give it away. I think this is the only one of a few Pokemon that actually have this ability. Uh, let's see here. Its height is six foot three inches. It weighs 573.2 pounds. Uh, for the metric people, height is 1.9 meters. Weight is 260 kilograms. Um, leveling rate is slow. I guess does it take a lot of XP to go up to the next level? I, uh, I, guess, I guess so. I suppose so. Uh, I already said it's a dual type. I can't tell you what kind of Pokemon it is. Well, you know what? I'll throw it out there. It's the cavern Pokemon. And I think that's really all the clues I can give you without giving away what it could be. So without, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and just read to you the, the Pokedex trivia again. This Pokemon came to the defense of Pokemon that had lost their homes in a war among humans. All right. Whatever it is, go ahead and lock in your answer. The Pokedex entry was for number six. 39 Terrakian. Terrakian? Terrakion? Terrakian. I'm going to say Terrakian. That sounds better to me. The uh, the Cavern Pokemon uh, has the ability Justify, because I think it's only these three, maybe four. Cobalion, Terrakian, Verizian, and Keldeo. Does Kaldeo have Justified? I think those are the only ones with the Justified ability. Um, uh, we already went over its height and weight. Uh, let's go ahead and see if there's any trivia on this Pokemon. Uh, let me go ahead and move on here. Of course, I'm getting my info from uh, Bulbapedia. Uh, oh, here we go. No other Pokemon has the same type combination as Terrakian. Right? Fighting, rock. Yeah, I guess so. Terrakian is similar to Moltres. That's a weird comparison. In three ways. Here we go. It is a member of a non-mascot legendary trio. Fair. 
is found in its region's victory road in the first games that feature its region, okay, and is found in a different location in all subsequent games. How then is it not similar then to? Oh no, because Zapdos and and Articuno, Zapdos is in Power Plant, Articuno is in um, Seafoam Islands. And yeah, so Moltres is in Victory Road and Terrakion would be in Victory Road. Okay, that's fair. That's what separates. Okay. Terrakion takes super effective damage from grass, steel, water, and fighting. The collective types of the other members of its quartet. Grass, Verizian. Steel, Cobalion. Uh, water would be Caldeo. And then fighting is pretty much everybody. Uh, Terrakian's attack and special attack stats are the reverse of Keldeo's, while their st other stats are identical. Terrakian, Cobalion, and Verizian were all designed by Takao Uno. Oh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ta Takao Uno, which I'm not too familiar who that is, just by quickly uh, Lincoln is a graphic designer for Pokemon games since Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. He is the art director for Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and who was responsible for the design of the new female protagonist, Lyra. He was appointed by Junichi Masuda as a director for Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. Okay, um, thoughts on Terrakian? Uh, he's okay. I don't have any high affinity for actually these Pokemon because, again, I never finished maybe i did finish black and white but i just didn't do any of the post game stuff and i didn't really finish black and white too so it's not like these guys stick out to me if anything cabalion only really, stick, only really sticks out to me because i think he was um a prominent card in a tcg for a little bit uh verizian i just remember being a v card i, I don't remember terrakian getting no 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 verizian was a, a gx card something like that uh just terrakian doesn't like a, i don't know just stick out to me for whatever reason i do remember catching it in sword and shield and being this like big bulky pokemon that was in a cave but that's pretty much it so i don't have a lot of exposure to these pokemon i don't really use them uh that often and so i just think it's okay i think design is kind of cool it's like a bull right i, I may maybe i'm assuming it's like a bull um yeah I, i'm and the uh typing is interesting rock and fighting i don't know how useful that would be though I, I mean, it's nice that you resist fighting, but then again, are you weak to flying? Did what didn't, didn't it say that in this trivia? Uh, it takes super effective damage from grass, steel, water, and fighting. So no, resist flying because of the rock typing. Uh, I don't know. You can let me know your thoughts on Terrakian. And that is pretty much it. Uh, the, that's a short episode. All my episodes are going to be fairly short because um, it's really, again, just me. I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again. It is just me. And uh, I don't know. I I don't want to delve into news stuff, really, because uh, I end up being like just the other podcast. And I'd rather just kind of talk opinions and perspectives about, you know, aspects of Pokemon um, rather than just kind of repeating the news. Although there's something really big and notable, um, I will kind of obviously have an episode about that like some scarlet and violet uh information and whatnot and yeah uh, my next topic um is really going to cover all aspects of pokemon like all types and games of pokemon um for a very particular reason uh and i, I think it's it leads to a good discussion because i i want to know if i'm alone in this type of situation or not but i'll leave that for the next episode all right that that's that's it let's wrap this up if you want to follow me on social media you can follow me on instagram or twitter at spartan strike zero seven uh if you want to listen to these episodes on youtube rather than whatever other listening platform you're on uh you can follow the channel at spartan strike zero seven and if you want to write to me an email comments feedback uh opinions on any of the topics i talk about um spartan strike zero seven at gmail.com all that stuff will be down in the show notes below and without further ado I can't wait to talk to you guys next week about anything and everything Pokemon.